In the previous section, we have discussed about some of the bridging loops and the alternatives to stop those bridging loops and in that we are going to use STP. Now probably in this section we will we'll discuss about how what is STP, some basic introduction to that STP and how it is going to prevent the loops and what are the step by step process it is going to, um, it, is going, it is going with uh, when it comes to selecting the forwarding or the blocking ports. So the first thing STP stands for spanning tree protocol and spanning tree protocol as per IEEE it's 802.1D standard, which was initially developed by Digital Equipment Corporation, but later on it has been made as a standard. So it's a standard protocol which runs on every switch by default. It runs where it is going to find the redundant links. Let's say if you have four links, it's going to put any one of the link into forwarding and automatically all the remaining links will be, uh, will be put into blocking state. So which means they don't forward any traffic. Now, STP is going to help us in uh, preventing those issues like uh, broadcast storms, multiple frame copies and data instability. That's a max table instability. So it's going to prevent the loops which generally, uh, which generally happens if you have multiple links between the switches by putting some ports into blocking state. And STP is enabled by, by default in all the Cisco Catalyst switches. So now in this, uh, uh, here we are not, we are going to see how exactly the STP is going to work. So how the STP is going to work, the entire STP process happens in three different steps. So the first step is selecting the root bridge, selecting the root port, and then selecting the ports, designated ports, that's what we call as forwarding ports, and then selecting the blocking ports, the non-designated ports. So there are a few things we need to understand before we actually get into the complete spanning tree process. So let us start one by one. So the first step, selecting the root bridge. Now to understand this process, I'm going to uh, select, take some uh, default uh, selection of three switches. You can, you can take more than that. Now I got a switch one, switch two and switch three and I want to understand how STP is going to work in this scenario. So in fact, whatever the topology, it's going to work in the same fashion. So let's take an example. I got a user connecting on H1, uh, switch one, switch two, and there is a user on switch three. It's going to generate a broadcast request and the broadcast goes to switch one, switch one, send back to switch three, and switch three will send back to switch two, and then it will repeat. So which means in this scenario, there is a possibility of loops now I want to understand how STP is going to prevent in this scenario or it can be any scenario it's going to work same but I'm going to take this as my sample topology which is uh, which 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 I'm uh, using here now the first step let's take an example I got three different switches now the first step here will be selecting the root bridge that's the root bridge root bridge is like a central switch uh, where it is like a reference point from where every other switch can decide what ports it has to put into forwarding state. It's just like you know when it comes to calculation of uh, deciding the forwarding ports or the blocking ports they need to make any one switch as a centralized switch or a route we call it as here. Now what they do is they do some elections now switch one switch two switch three what they do is they say that uh, they, they undergo some election process where they decide that any switch, whichever the switch is having the best bridge ID will be considered as the root bridge. So which means whichever the switch is having the best information or the best bridge ID will become the root bridge. Now they keep on sending some hello messages between them. Now we call them as BPDU messages. Now every switch will exchange their own bridge ID information by using some bridge protocol data unit messages which are sent for every two seconds. Now every switch will advertise itself as a root bridge. So let's take an example, um, the priority value. So the bridge ID is actually a priority value and the MAC address. So assume that now whichever the switch is having the least value will be considered as a best value here. Now in my scenario, uh, let's take an example. The switch one is having the priority value of uh, 32768, let's take an example and the priority value of the switch 2 is 4096 and assume the priority value of the switch 3 is 8192 out of these three switches any one has to become the root 
So whichever the switch is having the least priority value, that will be considered as the best. Now in my scenario, it is 4,000, 32,000, 8,000. So which is the least? So 4,000 is the least. So switch two will say that I'm having a better bridge uh, bridge ID than other two switches in the network. So I'm going to become the root bridge. So everyone will agree on that. Everyone say that, okay, who is a root bridge? Switch two is a root bridge. Switch, th switch two is the root bridge and switch two is the root bridge. So everyone come to a conclusion initially. So what if, if all the switches have the same priority value and the default priority value on the Cisco switches is 32768. So that we can verify later on in the next video, we'll be getting into that more in detail, the verification process. Now, what if all the devices have the same priority value? So let's take an example. The switch one is having the priority value of 32768, switch two and switch three all having the same priority value. In that case, the tiebreaker will be the MAC address of the switch. Now every switch will have its own MAC address and we can verify with a command called show version. There is something called base ethernet MAC address. Uh, we'll verify this when we get back to the labs again. So whichever the switch is having the least MAC that will be considered as the root bridge. Now in my scenario, if I assume the MAC address of this device is 0001, uh, in fact, it's a 12 digit number. I'm not writing that complete numbers. If I assume the MAC address of this device is 0002 and the MAC address of this device is 0003, in that case, whichever the switch is having the least MAC that will be considered as a root bridge. Now in my scenario, you have to compare the first number if the first number is same, check the second number, second number is same, check the third number. That's how you have to verify. Now in this scenario, as the priority value is same, the tiebreaker is a MAC address. Now in this scenario, the switch one will be elected as a root bridge. So the first step, all the switches will do whenever you power on the switch is they keep on sending their uh, BPDU messages. And in that BPDU messages, they will advertise their own bridge ID information saying that this is my bridge ID information um, and what is your bridge ID information. So they will compare their own bridge ID and the remote bridge ID and they will come to a conclusion that who is a root bridge? Switch one is a root bridge. Switch one is a root bridge. So they all come to a conclusion of a common root bridge in your network. So there will be only one root bridge. That's something you need to know. So you can have only one root bridge. That's it. Even if you have 20 switches, let's say if there are some 20 switches in the LAN, there will be only one root bridge and all the remaining will be considered as non root bridges. Now all the remaining switches will be considered as a non root bridges. Okay. So let me just, let me just draw the same diagram here just to go with the step by step process. Now in my scenario, I'm going to take some three devices, switch one, and then switch two and then switch three. And I'm assuming the MAC address of this device is 0001 and this is 0003 and then 0002. And also assuming that the priority value is same, which is default. So we can also change the priority value. So that's something I'll discuss later on. So we can even change the priority value just to go with the default as of now. And then we have some connection between the switches. And I'm assuming it's port number 20 and port number 21 and port number 22. Same ports on both the sides or it can be different port numbers as well. Now in my scenario, based on this, this is a root bridge. That's, that's what we decided to go with. Now every LAN will have only one root bridge. As I said, if you have some 20 devices, let's say there are some 20 switches in my LAN. Assume that there will be only one root bridge and all the remaining 19 will be considered as a non root bridges. Okay. So the next step, selecting the root port. Now this is really important to understand here, selecting the root port because now every non root bridge looks the best way to go to the root bridge. Now in my scenario, if I, if I assume this is a root bridge, because this is having the best bridge ID, now all the remaining switches will be considered as a non root bridges, non root bridges. Now every non root bridge looks the best way to go to the root bridge. So they have to look the best way. So this is one route they can go and there is another route they can go like this. 
Out of these two routes, any one can be the best. If I assume that this is the best, there are some conditions for that. I will come back to the conditions. So there are two ports which will take you to the root bridge. Now they will decide out of these two ports, whichever is the best. If I assume this is the best, in that case, this port will be considered as a root port. So root port is the shortest part to the root bridge, which will take you to the root bridge and the best part to the root bridge we can say. So every non root bridge looks the best way to go to the root bridge. That's what uh, they will do. Or we can say the shortest part of the root bridge is considered as a root port. But now the question is based on what conditions it is going to decide or select the root port. So there are three different conditions we have here. The first thing they are going to see the cost, the bandwidth. Now there are some default cost values here. If you are using 10 Mbps link, the default uh, port cost will be 100. If you're using 100 Mbps, the cost will be 19. If you're using one gig link, the default cost will be four. If you're using four gig link, the default cost will be considered as two. So depending upon the type of the link we are using. Now in this scenario, I'm assuming that I'm using 100 Mbps links, which is something default we use most of the time. So I'm assuming all the links are 100 Mbps links. Now if I'm using some 100 Mbps links, now who is the root bridge? This is my root. Every non root bridge looks the best way to go to the root bridge and the cost to reach on each and every port is 19. Based on 100 Mbps, the cost is 19. So if I go from this way, let's say I'm going from this route, what's the total cost? It's going to be 19. And if I go from the other route, let's say I'm, I'm going to from this route, if I go from this route, the green one, the total cost is going to cost me 38 because 19 plus 19, how much it is 38. So there are two possible routes to reach the root bridge. Out of these two possible routes, the one is 19 and the other one is 38. So whichever the route is having the least again, remember again, least is always preferred in the spanning tree the least cost will be considered as a best route. So in other words, we can say higher bandwidth will be more preferred. But here when it comes to calculation, we always uh, prefer, prefer least cost here. So shortest path or the least cost. So in this scenario, this port will be considered as a root port because uh, to reach from every non root bridge looks the best way to go to root, root bridge. And this is the shortest part of the root bridge in terms of cost. Now the same way, now this is a root port on switch 2 and similar way the same thing uh, will be done by switch 3 also. Switch 3 it will see if it goes from here the cost is 19, if it goes from here it will be 19 plus 19 it's going to be 38. So it will say that this is the shortest path so it will write down this port as a root port. So every non root bridge will have one root port. So which means if I, if I take an example of I'm having one root bridge and I got 19 non root bridges. In that case, there will be 19 root ports because every non root bridge will have one mandatory root port and that will be only one, not more than one. So the first condition it is going to see the shortest path for the shortest path to the root bridge. It's going to see the cost. Now there might be cases where there is a tie in the cost. What if there is a tie in the cost? So in this scenario, this is a root port. That's what we decided, root port. And then in this scenario, uh, the switch to this is a root port because of the shortest path. But what if there's a tie in the cost? So when there is a tie in the cost, let's take an example. I got a root bridge here and it is connecting to some two different switches. And then and then it's connecting back again to another switch. Now in this scenario, I got two different switches, a root bridge. Now if I go with all ethernet ports, the default cost, and the default cost from both the sides will be 19 plus 19, 38. So if I go from this way, what's the overall cost? 38. And if I go from the alternate route, the overall cost is how much? 38. Now when there is a tie in the cost, in that case, now both the root, both the ports will not be a root port again. Again, don't think that both will be a root port. There will be only one root port. 
so now the next condition they are going to see the forwarding so the first condition is cost and then if there is a tie in the cost it's going to see the forwarding uh, bridge id forwarding switch bridge id okay so if assume that the priority value of this switch is 4096 and the priority value of this switch is 8192 it's going to see the bridge id bridge id means first it will see the priority value and if there is a tie in the priority value then it will see the mac address so which means this is having a better priority value in that case this will be the root port okay so this port so it's going to see the forwarding switch bridge id forwarding means upstream upstream bridge id not the local upstream bridge id now in case if there is a tie in the priority value if i assume the priority value of these two devices are 32768 and 32768 because by default when you talk about bridge id uh, mostly if you go with the default values the priority value will be same then the tiebreaker will be the mac address so bridge id means first it will see the priority value if there's a tie in the priority value then it is going to see the mac address so forwarding switch bridge id if i assume the mac address of these two devices is 2c and 2d and assuming that the priority value is same then the tiebreaker will be the mac address so the mac address of 2c is less than 2d so the least will win and this port will be considered as a root port so that will be the next condition it is going to see so the forwarding device mac address so this is my root port so based on priority value or mac address so if there's a tie in the priority value the tiebreaker will be the mac address so what if there is a tie in the mac or priority priority value there is a tie then the mac and what if there is a tie in the mac so is there any possibility for tying the mac Let's take one more example here. Uh, let's say I got a diagram of root and then I got a switch connecting to this one and the MAC address is same and also priority value. Now in this scenario, if I, if I just go with the default cost values, the cost is 19, 19, 19. So if I go from this route, the cost is 38. And if I go from this way on the same port, the cost is 38. So the first condition that tie in the cost, then the second condition it is going to see the priority value in the MAC address. So here it is actually coming on the same switch. So probably there is a tie in the forwarding bridge ID also. In that case, it is going to see the third condition will be forwarding port number. That's what upstream port number, upstream port number we can say. Now out of these two conditions, it is going to see what is the port number you are connecting here. Let's say I'm connecting on port number 23 and I'm connecting port number 24. So it's going to see the upstream port number and based on that, the least port number will be more preferred. Now in this scenario, this port will be considered as a root port. So even though maybe you are connecting port number 20, 20 here, maybe port number uh, 10 here. So it's not going to see the local ports, it's going to see the upstream ports, okay, not the local ports. So out of these two ports, the, the 23 is the least one upstream port, so this port will be considered as a root port. So this is the third condition it is going to see when it decides the root port. Now these are the three main conditions we need to know. First it is going to see the cost, if there's a tie in the cost, it's going to see the forwarding bridge ID. In that it will see the priority value if there is a tie in the priority value the second condition it will see the mac and then if there's a tie in the mac and priority value if they are coming from the same switch it is going to see the port number and that to the forwarding or the upstream switch port number